Pacino's Doctrine of the Two Venuses. Today's presentation is a reading from Marsilio Ficino's commentary on Plato's Symposium. Love's two births and the two Venuses. We shall now say a few words about love's two births. In Plato's dialogue, Pausanias declares that love is a companion to Venus, that there are as many loves as there are Venuses, and that two Venuses are accompanied by two loves. One Venus is heavenly and the other is common. The celestial Venus was born of Uranus without a mother, while the common Venus was born of Jupiter and Dione. The followers of Plato call the supreme god of God heaven or Uranus because just as heaven contains all other bodies, so God contains all other spirits. The followers of Plato give several names to angelic mind. Sometimes they call it Saturn, sometimes Jupiter, and sometimes Venus, because mind is, lives, and understands. They apply the names of Saturn to its being, the name of Jupiter to its life, and the name of Venus to its power of understanding. In a similar way, they also call the soul of the cosmos Saturn, Jupiter and Venus. Saturn because it understands things supreme, Jupiter because it moves the heavens, and Venus because it procreates all that is lower. The first Venus we mentioned, who is in angelic mind, is said to have been born of Uranus without a mother, for matter is known as mother by the, natural, by the natural philosophers, and angelic mind is a stranger to physical matter. The second Venus, who is located in the soul of the cosmos, was born to Jupiter and Dione. To Jupiter as that power of the cosmic soul which moves the heavens, for that power has produced a secondary power which generates all lower things. They also say that this Venus has a mother because as she is infused into the matter of the cosmos, she seems to be associated with matter. Finally, and to sum up, Venus has two aspects. The first is that intelligence which we located in angelic mind, and the second is the power of procreation attributed to the soul of the cosmos. Each Venus has a love like herself as her companion, for the first Venus is seized by a natural love to contemplate the beauty of God, while the second Venus is also seized by her love to procreate the divine beauty in physical bodies. The first Venus initially takes the divine splendour into herself and then transmits it to the second Venus, who imparts to the matter of the cosmos the sparks that fly out from the splendour that she has already received. Through the presence of these sparks, all the bodies of the cosmos become beautiful, each according to its capacity. This physical beauty is perceived through the eyes by the human soul, and this soul has two powers, 
to know and to procreate. These powers are the two Venuses within us. They are accompanied by the two loves. When the beauty of the human body registers on our eyes, then our mind, which is the first Venus within us, holds this beauty in awe and love as an image of the divine beauty and is frequently alerted to the divine beauty by the physical beauty. In addition, the power of procreation, which is the second Venus within us, longs to procreate a form that is similar to this. Thus, there is love within both these powers. In the first, it is the desire to contemplate. In the second, the desire to procreate beauty. Each of these loves is honourable, for they both pursue the divine image. So what is it that Pausanias condemns in love? I shall tell you, if anyone is so eager to procreate that he fails to contemplate, or if he engages in procreation unlawfully, or puts physical beauty before the beauty of the soul, then he is abusing the dignity of love. And it is this misuse that is castigated by Pausanias. Of course, anyone who makes proper use of love praises physical beauty, but by means of this beauty, he contemplates a nobler kind of beauty within soul, within angel and within God, and his desire for that beauty is more fervent, and he engages in the function of procreation in accordance with the natural order and the laws promulgated by the wise. So there we have a neoplatonic philosophy of love espoused by the renaissance priest and magician um, within the court of the medici uh, marsilio ficino and what strikes me to mention here is that we have two levels at which um love is operating and these two levels are associated with the figure of Venus or Aphrodite who is a divinity of love, fertility and sex. Um, these two levels are classic um, Neoplatonic categories and they are angelic mind in Ficino's scheme, which is alternatively in other Neoplatonic systems, nous, or uh, the plane of angelic intelligence or divine intelligence, nous, the first emanation from the one. And secondly, we have soul, or in the Greek, psyche psyche um don't know if i'm pronouncing psyche correctly there it's a different pronunciation in greek anyway it's the same word that we get you know psychology from this word psyche soul yes this is the third level of any system of neoplatonic emanation the three, the three spheres in most Neoplatonic schemes are the one, which is a transcendent principle, very much akin to the transcendent Godhead, which I mentioned in my previous um, presentation on the paradox of God. 
um, that ineffable, incomprehensible, um, utterly beyond unity of all. And nous or angelic mind is the first emanation from the one, and it is therefore the first principle of intelligibility itself, the first level at which we might get a grip on the order of things, the intelligible order of things. It is also commonly associated with the realm of platonic forms or ideas. Soul, by contrast, is, according to Ficino's account, closer to matter. Um, there is a sense in which angelic mind or nous is, uh, to use what Ficino said, sort of independent of matter. Um, this Venus, this principle of love is, for Ficino, without a mother. Uh, disconnected from matter because the eternal ideas the forms the blueprint archetypes uh, plan structure intelligence of reality according to this neoplatonic metaphysics is prior to matter prior to material manifestation it is prior because it is the first um, ordering principle really. Um, by contrast the second Venus, the um, earthly Venus, um, is now closer to matter, closer to manifestation and so has a mother and a father and on Ficino's reading, what's happening here is that we have the heavenly Venus on the one hand, which is a contemplative love. It is the love of the good. It is the love of God. It is this um, eros this desire for what is highest of all. That means the desire for the truth. That means the desire for beauty and the desire for goodness. Or simply the desire for God, the love of God. And so this is a more important or sort of, um, yeah, I guess more important or more primary love for Ficino, this heavenly Venus. And this is the archetype of true love and true beauty and true goodness. Because, as I've said, it's associated with angelic mind or nous, the essence and the principle of all things the intelligible order of the cosmos. Related, though, is that the heavenly Venus bestows as a gift upon the earthly Venus this, shall we say, this image of goodness, beauty, truth. And so the heavenly Venus bestows this upon the earthly Venus. And the earthly Venus thus is in the in one aspect of the earthly Venus is remembering this image, is patterned after this image, and is saying, um, how can I be beautiful? Like how can I um Im like imitate or be in the likeness of this heavenly Venus, this archetype, this idea. And so the earthly Venus is in one sense heavenly. If you see, this is what uh, Ficino meant by um, having a father and a mother. There is an upward looking and a downward looking aspect to the earthly Venus. And one aspect of the earthly Venus is remembering the archetype 
And the second aspect is a um, procreative uh, aspect or a generative mm -hmm. aspect. And this is um, basically giving birth to uh, something which is patterned according to that archetype. This um, leads into a discussion of platonic participation for the material order of the cosmos is thought to 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 a greater or lesser degree um, participate in the spiritual order of the cosmos basically um or soul participates in angelic mind or noose and so what what is ensouled is what is living and is generative and fertile and uh, fecund and so we have and this is all closer to uh, to the material realm, to the earth. Um, and so we're talking now about, I mean, we could talk about um, the vegetable realm, the realm of trees, the realm of animals, and the realm of rational souls, human beings. But all of them are have this dual aspect in the earthly Venus, which is to pro procreate. And to procreate is to generate um new life obviously it's to generate new life in beauty because that's what sexual union is sexual union is the generation of new life in beauty and that sort of stamp of the beautiful upon the process of procreation is a um uh likeness of or like a desire for um god truth goodness beauty in the higher heavenly venus so that uh, so let me see if i can get this up again because what's being said here by facino which i find very fascinating is that uh, both both loves are being affirmed and both loves have um have uh can't find it but I'll finish the presentation um both loves have their place um because the heavenly venus provides the pattern, the archetype, the idea, the blueprint, which is intelligible and essentially immaterial. This is the heavenly Venus, and Ficino associates that with contemplation, or I might suggest intuition uh, in the soul. That means in your soul, in the, hu the human soul, we, there is a love which is associated with this heavenly Venus. And similarly, within the human soul, there is another kind of love, which is associated with the earthly Venus. And that has to do with sexual love and procreation, earthly eros. So we have a doctrine of like a dual eros in the Platonic tradition broadly, for sure because this comes right out of the symposium and you can see it in Plotinus. Um, but strikingly here in Ficino, who is a, a Neoplatonic philosopher of the uh, the Italian Renaissance, um, so we have a heavenly love, an earthly love, a spiritual love, a... Um, fleshy love um again this connects to a previous presentation i've done on the this 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 doctrine of the um the 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 dual person or the double human being in origin and meister eckhart 
you know this idea of um yeah basically a heavenly and an earthly aspect to human existence um but interestingly for Ficino we have a primary love which is the uh heavenly Venus a secondary love which is the earthly Venus and they're both connected and they are both um the words he uses is like they're both seeking after the divine image contemplation is seeking after the divine image in a intellectual contemplative intuitive spiritual way and um procreation is seeking after the divine image in an earthy um productive generative material way uh, both have the same end in mind for Ficino. Um, the only thought that I was going to get the book out to read again, but um, just remember it is um, is you know what corrupts this, you know, and there's a comment right towards the passage, towards the end of the passage I just read, and it's to the effect of if the earthy love or the earthy Venus or Aphrodite um, become gets supremacy, if we pursue sex and procreation whilst trampling over or forgetting about or neglecting its archetype, its principle, its blueprint, its idea, which is the heavenly Venus, we are sort of perverting or corrupting or um, disordering the sort of wisdom of love, basically. We are, you know, inverting the natural order of things. This reminds me of the Augustinian doctrine of the ordo amore, uh, the order of the loves. And here, Ficino is saying that there is an order to the loves, that the heavenly Venus is primary, the principal love, the eros, which is directed towards the divine itself, and that the earthy eros, the flesh, the body, has a place in this vision, uh, has a noble uh, place in as much as it's aiming for the divine image, but that but it's a matter of justice. You see, it's a matter of justice in the sense of justice, meaning um, things in their proper place, things in their proper order. It's a matter of justice because if our loves are ordered in the correct way and that we we understand that earth earth the earthly venus of the soul in matter beautifying and perfecting physical matter is an image or a likeness of a higher angelic mind a noose um sphere of eternal intelligibility if we forget this and instead we make primary the earthy love um this is disastrous because we then become untethered from the this connection this participation in the divine um this uh, remembering of the divine this return to the divine which is the true sort of pull and call of all eros on the platonic view um so if our so our eros can in that sense become disordered um yeah i think that's that's it for me uh today um incredibly rich passage there from facino and this goes back into the whole platonic tradition really as i say it comes out of uh the symposium 
one of Plato's dialogues on love. And from there, we see Plotinus um, commenting on the two natures or the two loves. And we see it here in Ficino too. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's an astounding vision, I think, and one worth contemplating and um, considering more fully. Um, thank you so much for listening and thank you for paying attention. Um, I would love to hear any comments, any questions, any objections, any thoughts really down in the comment section below. Um, if you liked this video, I would love it if you can tick like on the video because that means that more people might see it or that um, there might be more awareness to this kind of content. Um, if you're interested in hearing more about these things, of course, subscribe to the channel. And um, if you'd like to support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description. Um, that's it from me. And I'll be bringing out more content like this soon. So thank you for listening. Um, end it there.